like Timberland gave me a shout out on the gram, like, yo, I wanna work with Buddha. I got a call from Chains one time when he was playing Pretty Girls Like Trap Music. Yo, Pharrell said you blessed, man. And it's like, those were my idols. I'm like, not saying people are now not iconic, but them like, it was the people like you watch, like Pharrell and Jay-Z and all that. Like, you know what I'm saying? They make it bigger than just, you know, me lasting two years, you know, to making that big music lasting, you know, years, decades. All these damn chains, modern slavery. But this ain't 1800, so they pay me. Shaking my demons off, dipping my dreams in sauce. Never been fooled for sharks. Risk like fans of dogs. Me and my brother was, you know, like a lot of black kids growing up. My mom put us in the church. We just gravitated towards the instruments. You ready for this? Ooh, I ain't got a mix. I used to sit behind the organ minister's door, just learning. Until one day, you know, like I remember. Um, it was like during like a little prayer time. It wasn't even no big songs. It was just like prayer in the little session. He let me slide over and play and like through like through high school. Like that was my my job. <laughs> Ain't that a hoe? I grew some more. So we always liked the keys, but I started probably getting good at actually playing around when I was 12. Like 13 or 14, my uncles, the Smith brothers, they introduced me to actual music production and making records and mixing and mastering and all that. Otis Redding, Cigarettes and Coffee. I actually heard it riding with my grandfather. And I had to leave it like that. I don't know if y'all noticed, but I didn't like the beginning of the actual beginning of the record. I left it just how it was. It's early in the morning. See now, this part right here is actually, it's just a guitar loop. Now the bass line, I just wanted to really just follow the actual bass line that was already there. Just put a little more, a little meat on it. Now this part, I still wanted to keep the sample feel. So I, I it's literally just like a little chop I already got in my own little personal sound kit. It's just a little. <laughs> The next part of the record, it's actually the same sample, but uh, I took the pitch down a whole 12 semitones, a whole octave. See, one thing about it, like, you gotta be simple too. You gotta get an artist's room to be his or her own instrument. We caught Grandma, she, she doing her one, two to this already. Well, your grandma already familiar with that. She heard it before, it's somewhere in her already. Then you get to the drums. The drums is always the feel of the generation, whatever generation it is. Back in the day, you had boom, bap, now you got 808, trap. You can write the Migo flow on that. You know what I mean? You can get that little pocket. When you hear that, it go from zero to a thousand. You already liked it, but now you really love it. Like, you just love it. I hear a lot of fans, like a lot of my fans saying, oh, when I hear that Buddha Blessings v tag, I know it's gonna be some heat. So it's kinda, it's a, it's a branding. It's just like putting your logo on it. <laughs> New York where hip hop started, Atlanta's where it's at. I was born where it started and I live where it's at. Both sides gave me both parts of my swag. Like, I'll come up top, like I, I talk a little country, but I still wear my brim to the front. I would say my style is like your grandmother music mixed with Gucci, man, like with 808 with bass. Soul, trap, trap, soul. You know when you hear it. All these damn chains, modern slavery. But this ain't 1800, so they pay me. <laughs> trap in the cap. I bet the trap in the cap and we're moving. I happen to tell me what's happening. The piggy, the blame, the wrecking, the hut. I got to do with no match. Mm. I got to do with no tech. Mm. What gonna do? What gonna do? Two. Two chain, one on, big pump, big flag, big man, big bad, big come, big set, big tech. I'm in the mood.